Hello folks, welcome back for another one. Someone had expressed interest in the magical abilities, and I thought since the last video we did over the inventory menu was pretty dull, kind of boring and tedious, that we'd do something fun to shake it up. So this is what I thought we would do. Meteor. It's actually pretty simple, so let's just jump right into it. I already have another clean project set up, so I'm going to click that, and in my blueprints folder, first thing I'm going to do is right click and create a blueprint class of an actor called summon target point. I'm going to open that up, add a component of a cone, scale it down to about 0.5, set its rotation on the y-axis to 180, and then move it up just a little bit so that we can, so it's not sunk into the ground. Now back out here, I'm going to right click again and create, create a material, summon point underscore mat double click and open that up with this highlighted I'm gonna set its blend mode to translucent I'm gonna hold one on the keyboard left click three on the keyboard left click M on the keyboard left click I'm gonna hook this to a this to emissive color for the color I'm going to set it to a red for the multiply I'm gonna set it to about 50 just so it's nice and nice and glowy for this one I'm gonna hook it to opacity and then set it to about 0.75 that way it's a little bit see-through but not completely I'm gonna apply that drop this down click that go back into my summon target point and set its material to that save real quick I'm going to open up my character. I deleted this at the bottom. That's all I've done to this project so far. So I'm going to right click, right mouse button. I'm going to add a branch. Drag off the press. On the condition, drag off prom promote to variable called can summon meteor question mark. I like to encase them in these can can booleans just in case you have something else your character's doing you can switch this off and then none of this will happen that way it's just you know, thinking ahead for other stuff so if they can which you want to make sure that's defaulted to true if they can you want to spawn actor from oh not form from class and you want it to be our target summon target point we'll drag off our mesh get transform and we'll spawn it right where we're at it won't be there long don't worry because we also want to add one called summoning meteor drag it out set oh one thing I forgot drag off this return value promote to variable called target point here we're going to want to be able to manipulate this thing so after the set of that then drag off that and set that to true with a branch right afterwards because we have something we want to continuously fire off as long as this is held so if this is true then we want to do a line trace by channel and we want to get our follow camera the only other thing I've done, I forgot, the only other thing I've done is I've moved my camera boom up from his hips to his shoulders, and I've moved the camera from where it was at out about 80 points, just to, uh, so it's about 80 on the Y, just because this view is so much easier to work with with this kind of thing. But back in the event graph, we want to get our follow camera, drag off get world location drag off again get forward vector box select back it up drag off here oh wait no no drag off to start 
Drag off, hit a plus sign because you want a vector plus a vector. Hook that to the end. Drag off the forward vector. Shift 8 will give you a multiplication sign. Vector times float. Make it about 5,000. That'll work. That'll work for me. Draw debug type for duration. Off the out hit, drag off. Break hit result. Holding B with a left click will drag off and add a branch with a blocking hit. So if our line trace hits something, then it'll set actor location. So on true, we'll set that there. And the location we want to set it to is where we hit. Then we want to right click, retriggerable delay. Hook that to there. Off of this false, just hook that to there. I'm going to set the time to about 0 .0. 0 0.025 and then I'm going to from the completed drag all the way back to that branch right after our set so as long as this continues to be true it'll continue firing off this and updating our location of our thing so I'm going to drag that down a little bit and double click just because I like to be able to see where where my lines are going so I'm going to double click add some reroute nodes real quick It looks like it might be crooked. I'm going to box select real quick, and you can hit Q on the keyboard, and it'll line up your lines. It actually was not uh, askew, so. Down here off of released, I'm going to hold B, left click, and add a branch. And if we are, if we have gotten far enough into this to be summoning Meteor, then we want to drag out our target point, find out if it is valid, which it should be, but this is just a safety precaution. And if it is valid, then we want to get the location of our actor. Drag that back. Drag off. Promote that to a variable called summon loc. And is valid. Set that there. Then we want to destroy destroy him so so just to recap real quick we find out if our character can summon a meteor we spawn our target point we apply it to a variable we set that we are summoning a meteor and then we go through our repeated branch of updating its location off of a hit result from our line trace to where we set the actor location to that hit result and then just find out again. Then on released we will find out if we've made it to this point because if we haven't we don't want to do anything. If we have we find out if this is a valid piece. If it is we update our location variable to this and then destroy it. So let's test that portion real quick. What in the fuck just happened? Okay. In your summon target point, come down to your collision. No collision. None at all. None at all. What in the fuck? What is happening? Oh, I'm a moron. Okay. okay. Your set actor location. Drag out your target point. Get it? You don't want to be set in your third person blueprints location. Ugh. Now let's try it. I thought it was knocking me around. There it goes. <laughs> okay. Why are you still firing? I know why you're firing. You know what I forgot to do now? Down here off released. We gotta drag all this out a little bit. Because we gotta set that we're not summoning the meteor anymore. Because that bad boy is probably on his way now. There we go. A little bit of a hiccup, but we're good. So now I want to right click, create another blueprint class of a character. I do it as a character just because it comes with automatic movement components and gravity settings. So it's easier to manipulate, in my opinion, for this kind of thing. So I'm going to call it a meteor spell underscore BP. You can do it as an actor if you want to. This is just the way I like to do it. 
I'm gonna open that up. Add a component of a sphere. Because we have nothing to sphere but sphere itself. Five, 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 I believe was what I said it as. I'm gonna move that up a little bit. I'm gonna set its material to the rock. I'm gonna deselect the sphere and add a particle system of fire. I'm gonna set its scale to about 10 by 10 by 10. I'm gonna move that back down actually. Yeah, that works. Just I'll just leave it where it was at. So now we got a flame and rock. Yay! Under its character of movement, I'm going to go to its movement general settings. Default land movement, I'm going to set to falling and set its gravity scale to about 3. You can mess with this number as much as you want if you want it to be a slower one, faster one, what have you. In here, I'm going to delete these two. Off of a begin play, I'm going to cast to third person character, or whatever your player character is called. Drag off get player character. And then I am going to get summon location. And I'm going to set actor location. This one we do want to be self-target. We don't want this to be the third person. So I'm going to drag off here, set that. But we don't want it to be exactly where our thing was at. So I'm going to drag off, do a plus sign, vector plus vector. And I'm going to move it up on the z-axis about 2500. Then I'm going oh no. Then I'm going to do a custom event and call it trace. So that at the end of this I can set that to start. So off of our trace, we are going to do a line trace by channel. We are going to get our actor location. Set it as the start get actor location minus I'm gonna say about 120 do that for duration I'm gonna do a block uh, break the hit results add a branch with a B left click oh, B left click hook that up off blocking hit off true then we want to wait no 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 just off the false. We only want to do something off the false right now. So if it's not a blocking hit, then we want to re-triggerable delay to about 0 0.01 and then call our trace function again. So now in the third person character, after destroy actor, we want to spawn AI from class. And the spawn will be the meteor. I'll hook that to the location. Which you might think, why don't I just do all this here? Which is a good point, I may as well. Hmm. Okay. Well, I didn't think about that. So I'll begin play, we'll just hook that straight to trace, and in here we'll just do the plus vector. You can do it either way, either way works, but. the z-axis then add 2500 to it should should work out let's find out for testing purposes at the moment I'm going to set its gravity scale to about 0.25 just so it'll fall slow enough I should be able to see that it's not fire it's firing the line trace but it's not 
big enough. So instead of 120, we'll do like 250. Still not enough. So minus 500. And now that's too much. So 300. 300 I see just the tip of the line and that's what you want so on true we want to spawn emitter at location the location we want to spawn it at will be the location of our hit and off true we want it to be an explosion the scale I'll drag off promote this to a variable called explosion size to where just in case your character has a multi-tiered magic system where you want like meteor one, meteor two, etc., all you have to do is really fudge with this number, which you can do on begin play. You probably would want to go ahead and do the cast a character and then get your character's magic level if you're doing that. I don't know. If you just want a meteor, this will work. So I'm gonna set its explosion size. We'll try five by five by five. Oh, and then we want to destroy actor of our meteor so that it looks like it kabooms. I forgot I didn't set up its speed again. But that works. So I'm gonna set its gravity scale back to three. Set the explosion size ten by ten by ten. Now that I know the line traces there, I'm gonna set that back to none. Compile. Back in here, I'm gonna set this one back to none. Compile. Save all that stuff. Play F11 for a full screen. And boom, you got some meteors falling. Sweet. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. So, thanks for stopping by.